Hello, Lucy. Hello, Curtis. There we go. Fuzzing in, the fuzzing in. 103 people already. 108. Hey, guys. Hey, oh, go. my God. Good Good there we go. Whoa. Hello. Uh, Joe. Hello. And, and Holly. Snakeheads. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> Hi, <all>. Poo, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that from the, um, someone from America there? Or is that just American Gosh. flag? Very good. Let us know if you're, if you're from abroad. It's always nice to know. Okay. I'm from abroad. I mean, yeah. not in you're from abroad. We're all <laughs> foreign trolls, you know. We're very foreign somewhere. There we go. Crew. Very good. Good to see you. 140 of us already. Piling in. Wow. We are foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians, yeah, all you foreigners. Morning from America. Good morning, Hello. America. Yeah. I, I still Cologne in Germany. Germany. Cologne, yeah. Mm. Australia. It's, it's late. Yes, I bet it is. Yeah, the Australians <laughs> are so good. It's about midnight in Australia. And it's still yeah, late. but you can be drinking proper officially. We, can, we can't officially be drinking. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's three o'clock here. It's three o'clock here. It's getting close. It's three o'clock on it's Sunday. getting close. Sorry. God, yeah, yeah. You'll be an hour ahead of us. Alan Arizona. Good day, know. Arizona. If this is the weekly AA meeting, I always click the wrong link. Yeah, no, you're in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny North Wales. There you go. Always worth it. Okay, guys. Well, we have our very special guest, Alan Rocky Marshall. Hi there. Um, Hello, hey, Rocky. Who actually has the billing of, of the, the man who designed Starbug. Yeah. And he was totally co designed. Got, I've always got to say that. Like um, yeah, he, um, well, you can you can tell us a story. Um, you, Peter of Rag wanted to uh, design a... Uh, a ship oh, called... Um, white Dwarf? The, the White Midget. Just one second, let's see if I can... Right. Rocky, okay, did you get any preparation it. for this, love? We warned you. Yes, we were going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Not enough, clearly. Remember that no, rehearsal no. we did yesterday, Rocky, where we <laughs> said... Well, last you week, wrote in the script that it was going to be called the White Midget. Peter Rag had some ideas, came to me, we discussed it, and I did a drawing. But I also did a few other drawings just in case. Yeah. And whilst I was doing these sketches, uh, another guy called Mike Tucker came up and he suggested the three spheres idea. So I took that suggestion, I took elements from the, the White Midget design I was already doing, um, a lot of which was from my stuff, as it were, and finally came up with, and this is the actual drawing. I don't know if that's tr translating well to people. Well, it is, it yep. is. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that's the original drawing. And that's uh, what that's, I... And, and we, it, we, it, we it were on our traditional... Guys, didn't it, Rob? We were on our traditional uh, visit uh, to the workshop, which we used to do at the start of every uh, writing session, just to... Uh, to see what was what, what they could do, what they liked doing. Um, and uh, Raggy showed me uh, Rocky's design and I said, oh my God, it's like a bug. That is brilliant. That's the one. And that's where Starbug was named. And uh, of course, we're just saying as well, what a nightmare it was for the set. Have another, another drawing. Oh, there's another angle. This is the, these it. are the blueprints that I drew. To, so, so that I could build the model and so that Mel Bibby would know the relationship of the sizes of the, the cockpit and the midsection mm -hmm. and, and how they could link together with that door that, between the two of them. Yeah. And as, mm -hmm. if you look there, you'll see it says, the bug. The bug? Yeah. It says green midget, ah. the bug, because it went through a time when we were going to change the colour of it, therefore change the, the name of it. Okay, Rocky, I'm just going to say there will be very painful consequences for you if you do not get me a photostat of that. Well, I think, Rob, <laughs> I think, Rob, genuinely, I think we should look into getting a print run of these because they are, they're the nearest to the original set designs I've seen, so... Uh, although we did auction the original set designs, didn't we, last year, but anyway. Set, I'm not sure that's the, that, I think, is a copy. The, 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 but the that pencil. is original. What you've got is original. That's original, but the, ah, right. the, the, the plan I showed you is a copy I made at the time. Ah, but I even so, think. Rocket, let's have a look, folks, into... Rob, if that's all right, let's have a look into getting these releasable on a poster or some, yeah. some kind of format. I, I would buy it. God, it's lovely. Okay. Lovely I stuff. I wouldn't buy it. I expect it for free. <laughs> well, you'd get a free one, Ed, because, you know, like you always do as a director. 
All right. First thing the here. director has to have a free one. Yeah, of course. Goes with the job. Ed, have you still got one of your camera scripts, didn't you say? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. See, we could put together yeah, a little book, couldn't got, we? Got all all these... They leave, uh, they leave a space for camera directions on the script. Yeah. And Ed fills in, oh, fuck, shit, how am I going to do <laughs> Backwards, you say. Backwards. <laughs> so... Uh, let's have a look, folks, into whether yeah. or not there's a book to, or a short yeah. publication of some kind to look at there, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to do a camera script, I just have to take all the swear words off it, but otherwise it'll be fine. No, no, leave it like it is. <laughs> then then uh, they'll all know what a bastard you really are. Okay, so, uh, As if they didn't know already. <laughs> <laughs> no, they think you're lovely. Lucy Smith thinks you're lovely. Oh, I see. Yes, damn. Yeah. Well, I am. Poor old Lucy. Already off on Ed again. Look, she's sticking up for you already. Look. Yay, go <laughs> off with it, Lucy. <laughs> now, uh, to lead into this episode. Hi, Emma. Great. I just want to say, when, when, uh, when you chided Rocky about uh, the rehearsal yesterday, there was a lot of people expressing serious surprise that we actually do a rehearsal for this. Mm. And, and I just want <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, you think we just chuck this together on a Sunday afternoon without any problems? Good Lord. Um, it all depends on what you mean by rehearsal, to be honest with you. <laughs> surely, surely it's a tech run, guys. Yes. Yeah, tech. Yeah. We do a dress rehearsal, we do a tech run. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in costume. We really need <laughs> some more from special effects on this season because it, 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 they really started to have an impact on the stories this time around. Um, Starbug certainly is a great influence on, um, on, on some of the uh, plots we were able to do um, because we could get off the ship. <laughs> we could have chases and crashes and you can't really do that in a giant spaceship. Uh, and, but as Ed said, of course, as soon as they enter Starbug, it means they're going somewhere, and that fills in with... <laughs> <laughs> That's what Ed didn't want to hear. Yeah. Um, whenever you read the script and they go, and they board Starbuck, you go, oh, God, in fear, you turn over the page to see where they're going. <laughs> Season three. Um, I remember we went into this. Um, we kind of thought we weren't going to get it at one point. We thought... Yeah, yeah. it was the difficult season. <clears throat> and it was so the we... difficult renewal. And, and so we thought, well, this is probably going to be the last one anyway. And we kind of, as writers, just threw caution to the wind and said, fuck it, we're going to do what we want and, <laughs> and, and really do proper science fiction. Um, so that was one of the things that liberated us. Uh, being producers did, the Starbug did, and having Crichton uh, also did. And the characters are now starting to, uh, uh, to fill out a lot more. I, I got... A, a cat when we began uh, writing Red Dwarf, I actually bought a cat called a Frankenstein and she'd had kittens. And I started to notice that while I loved them all, they all hated me. <laughs> they, they would let the rest of the family pick them up, but when I go near them, they're like, and um, it occurred to me that cats have different attitudes to different people. And the, our cat starts having a different, and it, it just fills him out and it helps him to interact with the rest of the, uh, of the crew. And this episode uh, was, we wanted to examine um, the, the power of negative emotions, the positive influence of negative emotions and how useless we'd be without them. And that's where this comes from. Okay, are we ready to press? Yep. yep. And yep. in three, two, one, press. Warning, um, Red Dwarf. I've got. Yes. Yeah, I've got it. Um, this voiceover, Ed, you think it was? Keith Buckley, am I right, gang? Was that Keith Buckley doing this voiceover? Danger. That one. So this is not the famous Carlsberg man. I think we tried to get the Carlsberg man and he cost maybe. hundreds yeah, of maybe. thousands of pounds or something. Yeah, it was ridiculously expensive. So yeah. we got somebody to copy him. <laughs> yeah, we expect him to be paid in Carlsberg. Yes. <laughs> So, Rob, just how uh, one of the questions coming in, how much of an influence was Alien on this specific episode? It's quite Alien-esque, yeah? yeah well, it, it is in a way. Um, yeah, we're sort of coming out uh, and acknowledging our sci-fi roots a bit uh, in Series 3. <clears throat> it's very influenced by uh, Alien. Um, all the corridors and everything uh, were an Alien thing anyway, so... Uh, With the lovely Mel Bibby, of course. Can I just uh, put who, at this point to say that the pod ship here, yeah. it's a vacuum cleaner. 
Good to know. It's made from a Brilliant. vacuum cleaner. It was, what I mean. Brilliant. it was made by a guy called Nick Cool. Right. Oh, Rocky, show, show us the pod behind you. This is something just Rocky just. Besides right. Fireball XL5 there for you cool guys. <laughs> He's got this, he made this himself. <laughs> and I am and definitely going to use it. Okay, so the voiceover. Pistol. Did you make this, uh, Rocky? Oh, sorry. I the... did, and this is a water pistol. This is the reservoir here. <laughs> and the trigger was about here. And I, I bought two of them, chopped it up, redressed it, and uh, made a little pot ship. There you go. So did you make the mini um, polymorph as well? Were you involved in that? No, Mike Tucker uh, did right. the, the little polymorph. Um, um, the cute one that runs around. That, rabbit, that remember, rabbit went on to become a star. Do you remember shooting that sequence, Ed? The, uh... Yeah, it was a, it's a fun sequence to shoot because you just lock the camera off and just put every possible thing you could think Object of in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice gag with great. Jilly. Nice. This is also, I think, one of the most gag-packed episodes. Yeah. I mean, it's Starting with this. Joke. Starting with the groin or well, yeah. we've yeah. had the chili already. We've had the chili and then we get the groinal attachment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're straight in, straight in. Uh, Ed, Ed Wooden, the editor, mm -hmm. um, really hated rude jokes for some reason. Do he you did. He, and he was the most foul-mouthed post himself. <laughs> he he swore was, like a trooper. Ed he swore like a show, trooper. He, show he didn't Paul like rude jokes. Prank, but he just didn't like rude jokes. He didn't and, like rude jokes. And he, Although he loved, yeah, he was rude himself. He, he hated he, the underpants sequence and it went on and on, this laugh. <laughs> Well, there's a sequence. I was going to say there is a sequence here where the laugh in the studio was so big that I didn't actually know what to cut to because I hadn't planned, you know, a 15-second laugh to completely blitz any kind of dialogue or anything. So we were just sort of looking there, firing shots off from cameras just to soak up the laugh till they finished. So this is um, this is a genuine sequence as it happened in front of the audience, Ed, when it gets yeah. to the underpants sequence. Yeah. That yeah, laugh it was. Yeah, we we had a cutting. decision. Yeah, there was a decision to make about whether we try and have boxer shorts and then go for really tight ones and see a right. shot of that. But that would mean having to stop. So we thought, well, what we'll do is we'll cover up his underwear with the thing, and 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 Craig can just act having very tight underpants. We did very well, um, and so we could keep the sequence live. So that <laughs> then then we got that whopping great laugh that. I think it's one of the biggest ones we've had. In, fa in fairness, I think we might have had to cut the laugh down a little bit because it just even went on with as long so as it is here. Long. But I mean, this yeah. this whole sequence with the with the hospital equipment as as cutlery is just brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, and oh, and yeah. Danny's reactions are very good here. He slowly becomes more yeah. and more disgusted by it. They are really interacting so much better than in the earlier series. Yeah. Characters. And things like, this isn't a dinner, this is an autopsy. Is this a yes, that's a, that's a good line. <laughs> this is how <coughs> Craig cooks. He cooks like that. I've seen his, I've yeah. seen his microwave. That was obviously a microwave <laughs> with the back off, folks. Yes, and indeed. That was fed the through the set. Yeah. But but very the quick set. change it's around, Ed, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. It was very fast. Quick we had to get the angle right so you didn't see the back because obviously there was, was no back, it was just fed in. But I mean, that's not a cut, that's not a locked off cut shot, that's real no. time. Yeah, that was Donna and her team. Hey, is is that around. genuinely an artificial insemination? <laughs> yes, it's yeah. an artificial insemination. Yeah, really? It genuinely is as well. This was, this was the week Donna filled out is it the <clears throat> prop plot with artificial insemination syringe, <laughs> kidney dish. Someone said, <laughs> did Donna get sprayed with tomato ketchup in the back? No, I, I think there, there's probably an opening door. So it, it could be opened, you know, so it was closed to start with, then yeah. opened, then the stuff was plonked in, then shut, yeah. Yeah. while the, well, while Craig did all the stuff around the front. Probably. But very quick. Yes. And here comes trouble. Nice edit there, that ball bounced happily in. Because those Very, are... very that nicely was... cut together, it, as if it were yeah. the same shot. <laughs> so, um... Little bits and pieces pre-recorded. This, I this was live. <laughs> but you've done a little cut with his family picnic because, of course, yeah. mother comes in later. Yeah. Yeah, a little plant of mum. Um, and again, background for Rimmer's sad, sad life here. You know. Yes. Oh God. And his delusion that everything was great. When they were just <laughs> so horrible. The brothers, the brothers <laughs> teasing him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mel Bibby set here, looking good. There we go, lovely shot. The young Rimmer being staked to the ground. Fortune. All over him. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, Robert's face in this uh, early days with the mask, it sometimes had a very kind of stillness, had a stillness to it. It became more animated once we started to up the techniques of sticking it to his face. This, I think, is one of the first examples of where he... He 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 develops that kind of Herman Munster look. Yeah. Yes, I noticed that. Yeah. If you watch, if you watch this, it's mm. the it's the Fred Gwynn kind of mm. face pulling. Um, yeah, he gets a lot of facial expression even in this stage where the mask is very stiff. Yeah. yeah. He still you still read his emotions through his yeah. face. Oh, he really worked it. He worked so hard getting to come through the mask, and he did terribly well. I mean, look at that. You can see that he's. You can well, actually, in this one, he's got to become... Right. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there you go, Herman, right there. Yeah. <laughs> Callie Greenwood. Callie Greenwood, very good. Uh, did we find out who played the voiceover at the beginning? Did anybody, did anybody know? know out there who, who did the voiceover? Is it Keith Buckley? No. Too much... I can't, I can't put his voice back, never mind. Jimmy Nile. No, it wasn't Jimmy Nile. No. <laughs> this is the classic shot, Ed. <laughs> when he leaves the frame. And it, it wasn't right. Jimmy Nail either. No, no, no. no, it wasn't Jimmy Nail either. That's no, what no. I meant. Yeah, it was Keith Buckley. Just Just watch this you, Mr. Yeah, Memory. There you go. <laughs> Keith Buckley. Jimmy Osmond, it was. was it? <laughs> <laughs> Although there's a very, very fine Osmond family joke in this episode. Yes, there the is a good Osmond family yeah. yeah. joke. Obviously. Can't we? we can't resist it. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, yes, Rimmer and Holly discussing their previous false alarms, of which appear to be many. Um, and I think she's taken over. Yes, that's right. I should have actually taken a shot of her interrupting his home movies. This, look, now Lister with his hand, uh, Craig with his hand under the table, he's not playing with himself. He's operating the kebab. That's hmm. right. He had a little switch. Why uh, did you with... make that kebab? Mark? I did not make that kebab. That it, however, I can tell you how it works. Basically, it's a it's a latex kebab, and inside it is yeah. a bent piece of rod, metal rod, right. with a little motor at one end. So when he clicks his button, the rod rotates, and it's it's bent. So as it rotates, it pushes the the latex right. kebab around and around. That's just pulled on a bit of wire. Right. And it's also an homage to um, Alien when yes, the original yes, creature yes, burst yes, out across the table, the, the chest yeah. burster. So here's a choice we maybe here's thought. Let's go for this live and let's not um, <laughs> let's not put <laughs> tiny pants on them. He can act it. And he did very well. Watch him acting now. Those pants are definitely getting tighter. Without a doubt, in my mind. Um, so this is the moment. The audience starts to laugh. <laughs> this... Uh, they, they're going bananas and it was just like this and and off, and it's on, just and beyond <laughs> and you're now looking for shots eh? <laughs> i am um, yeah oh, this was only one, one day thing. i think i took nine shots of him holding small <laughs> pants up i wonder if the original footage is anywhere we could tell how long it was yeah um, i think it was successful because it's, it's got that carry on quality yeah, yeah. you know it, it, it's both funny visually but it's also dirty you know it's, it's mm. naughty um, um i can't tell you um, <laughs> how quickly i had to get off that snake when it went from a real snake to that uh, what i call a draft excluder and you had the snake <laughs> out of there and you could only do it like that we wanted it held like that but it was cruel and oh, so is. successful is a shot coming up that I love the, the rising <laughs> shot is fabulous <laughs> now Rocky that animatronics yes. thing we blew most of the budget I think for series three <laughs> yes probably and it um, arrived in the studio it, and it broke its spine didn't it it did yeah. yes it was built by a guy called Andrew Jubert and he sculpted it and got it all together and we took it into studio and about halfway through the filming the the at one of the main uh, junctions, the main uh, hinges broke and it just sort of flopped to one side and became a bit <laughs> sort of awkward. So we decided to repair it. So we took it to a corner of the studio 
and Peter Rag said, look, can we weld it back together? And we went, yeah, okay. So we wheeled over the portable welder and then up came a guy, a commissionaire type guy from BBC Manchester. <laughs> went, you can't do that here. You need a hot work permit. Have you got a hot work permit? We didn't. He said, well, you can't do it here. So we left the studio. We went into the uh, scene dock outside, um, set it all up again, started welding again. Out, out he followed us. <laughs> Same time. Have you got a hot work? Because we're still in premises here. Have you got a hot work permit? Oh God! And it's like, no, we don't. He said, well, you can't. You can't do that here, right? But we've got to get it on screen. You know, there's an audience and everything. No, no, doesn't matter. You can't do that here. So eventually, we ended up taking it out into the car park, um, <laughs> and it was night time. And he wasn't even happy with it there, but he led us off because. I think he saw that we'd really made the effort, but that's so it ended up being repaired in the car park. We whizzed it back on, and you did shoot more on it. That you know? Jobsworth came up to me because this is my first job as a producer. Well, you're a producer this series, yeah. So uh, he, he said, you're the producer. Well, what are you doing? Uh, you haven't got a hot work. <laughs> I didn't know the fuck was going on. <laughs> I had to take it in the neck. <laughs> I do love, I do love the fearless Craig. <laughs> yeah, looking for a fight. You yeah. slightly suspect it's really Craig just being himself at that point. Yeah, yeah. Just, so yeah you're right. He does do surreal, that. Yeah. It's a real Craig, really well, really. doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he does it very frighteningly well. Yeah. I'm just wondering. It's a shame in a way that he let you carry on in the car park, Rocky, because I just love the idea of you having to carry it out of the BBC and doing it on the street <laughs> <laughs> with people driving by with polymorph on the cable. We've got enough looks anyway from the, from the one or two people who were in the car park at the Beam that night who had no idea what was going on in the studios, quite yeah. often. Yes, hello, darling. Yes, I'm parking next to a polymorph. Yeah, there's, your <laughs> there's your Osmond's joke. There's my Osmond gag. Fabulous. Now this was shot on location. Lovely. Now many people, I have to say here very quickly that um, that one of the things that Polymorph did when it attacked people, um, oh, I can't use that excuse, he hadn't been attacked yet. Okay, so basically we hadn't nailed Robert's accent quite yet. No, I was gonna so say in, that, yeah. In this yeah. sequence, he's actually speaking with an English accent. At the end is of because it. we filmed this before we got into the studio and before we oh, developed well done, it. And I was going to blame Polymorph for that, but I can't because he hasn't been zapped by the damn thing yet. <laughs> well, we always thought it was American, but the Americans thought it was Canadian. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> when this, well, when he was saying, it's here, it, it was very much English. So great work from Manchester, and I never gave him enough credit for the special effects here of these globes. Yeah, who's this, Real Ed? groundbreaking stuff. Um, graphic who's doing design. this, Because they are ex they're extraordinary. Graphic design in Manchester, they were yeah. really good. And I never yeah. how, what, is, that, is that a superimposed graphic? No. Yeah, um, yes, it, yes, I yes, gave them the shots and they put it on. I think that's right, Rocky. It yeah. was very early days of yeah. CG and things yeah. like that, especially yeah. for the yeah. BBC. So yes, they, they they did a remarkable job considering the limitations yeah. at that, back well, in 1989. Rocky, they've just got to the shot where uh, Danny oh. was holding the box. Yeah. Does that just yeah. happen? Yeah, yeah, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't expect it didn't to be quite as violent as that. <laughs> well, it, it, that's that's a, a, a substance called yeah. quick match, yeah. and it's it's like a very fast burning fuse. So we have two circles of it round the back of the on the inside of the cardboard box, fired electrically, um, and it burns at a rate of something like twenty meters a second. So it cut two instant holes in the box, mm. and they then fall <laughs> into the rest of the box and. Uh, that's how that was done, basically. But it really gave a jolt on Danny. Danny, yeah. when you're holding it, it kind of like yeah. a bobbin. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also, that's great. That is brilliant. That graphic. Yeah. It really is yeah. well done. It is really good. And I also say it was a real opportunity for me and Danny to go. Okay, what can we do here with the run, running around, him leaping up in the air, and things flying under his legs? We planned all that stuff, me and Danny together, because he's a very physical guy. Was capable of dancing. Oh, and Frankie Barber. And Frankie oh. Barber. And Frankie Barber. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Isn't she gorgeous? She still is, actually, everybody. I she saw still is. No, she's, yeah. Well, she, um, did two of our, she did two of our comedies, yeah? Yeah, yeah. She did two of our lockdown theatres. Yeah, of course. And, um, yeah, she's still she's very funny. And there's a lovely moment here 
where even the polymorph thinks the cat's a bit thick. If you, <laughs> if you watch her expression, yeah. and he, yes. I think it's yes. at the end of this shot, you'll see her oh, roll her eyes. The shot, oh, this there, real... good lord. Yeah, she rolls her eyes. <laughs> Just that even narrow... the polymorph can't, the, the can't believe how stupid this person is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think that was Frances just doing it on her own. She thought, you know, I'll roll my eyes here. It, it, it worked really well. And I, the, the, unfortunately, I do think one of the things in this, series, this episode that, that dates us is the inability to be able to chroma key like you can these days. Uh, yeah. So some of the transitions into polymorph are a little weird, like the one that's about to come up. Ideally, it would have been great if he came out of her mouth somehow, but yeah, more. we just didn't have... That's what the plan was, that the, the, that would actually and come out there, of her mouth. Yeah. But I had to do a quick dissolve because I just couldn't get the... I didn't have the te digital technology to do it. And of course, now it would be so easy. It's so very annoying, but there you go. It would still be expensive, though. Mm-hmm. It would mm -hmm. still be pricey. Mm -hmm. I love, I love that we, mm -hmm. we suddenly got Never a problem for me, Rocky. Not my problem. <laughs> no, we, we always looked after that, Rocky, don't you? Know? <laughs> it's a that can count emotions. It's, I don't know where that comes from or why we'd use that ever again, but there you go. Hmm. Yeah, it's, a really, it's a really interesting fundamental idea of, of which emotions to take from the four of them and, yeah. and what it does to them. I, I think it's such a clever episode, this. I really do. I think his back was broken there, Rocky, so that's I why we had to have... Right. Half his oh, face right. was missing. I think, I think there was a small team of us rotating him underneath. Yeah. <laughs> Again, chroma key could be better. Not not a Raelian shot. Um, so this this sequence, I think, was shot in. This was again in the Liverpool studios, I think. Um, pre pre shot um, because um, all those cardboard boxes. And the cardboard box is the best way. This is a lovely effect here. Oh, Very happy with that. Yes, that's yep. good. Yes, I'd love yeah. Yeah, uh, as it looks, a rubber tap, basically, yeah. with bladders yeah. in it, pumped sequentially. <laughs> and it goes down the tube and then... Bloody hell. Towards the end. Bloody hell. Hmm. And I, I really like... I mean, all four of them get the chance to be the opposite yeah. of themselves, which yeah. gives you some fabulous... Uh, <laughs> Um, ah. This this is horrible. This is just horrible. <laughs> it's gross. Remember having to watch Craig yeah. with his mother. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. He actually holds it back. He holds his temper for quite a long time. So you think, please lose your temper. Please may this be over. <laughs> and and added to by the fact that Lister is completely belligerent and not yeah. having any yeah. of it. Uh, yeah. And and Crichton's turned into an extremely yeah. aggressive, guiltless It's man. lovely. It's lovely. Now, I remember the consequence of this. We had a different character written for uh, Chris, who was basically, he was a hippie, he was Neil, really, from uh, the young one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Chris actually complained for the first time ever that it was uh, lazy of us to be writing that, and he wanted something else. And I was absolutely outraged that a bloody act <laughs> <laughs> but he was absolutely but look, right. But look how right he was. I mean, yeah. you've come up with a fabulous reverse character. Alphabetic spaghetti. Why alphabetic spaghetti? Yeah. Would what turn was that over? joke? I didn't get it. <laughs> I, oh, you've never used alphabetic spaghetti. Not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you not, it, not in the way that I assume you're implying. <laughs> <laughs> you have not lived. Um. I was thinking actually about the cat and vanity. Um, most uh, uh, characters in comedy who are, who are vain are also very ugly. You know, uh, Jack Benny, for instance, and Bob Hope, they're not really good looking guys. It's the first time I ever can think of a, of a vain character who's actually good looking too, and he's still getting <coughs> Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Interesting. I'm trying to remember it's... who we base this character on. The, I the think movie. it's, I really do think this is, uh... You know, this is more than a reversal. This is mm. Danny is a, a wash up version of the cat, but this is a completely new character for Chris. Mm. And it's and, a lovely. And the interesting uh, thing here about Craig is something to do with his makeup and the, the way that he's got all that stuff on his face. It, it actually makes him look. <laughs> it makes him look very action hero ish. <laughs> uh, to, to, uh, to the credit to the makeup and, makeup and costume department. 
I love the scene. I think the four of them being completely different. It's really... And it surely contains the best joke ever from Red Dwarf. Go. Oh. Yes. Go you on. Away with so much, Rob. You really did for no for the liberation. <laughs> Which gag are you talking about, Rob? The, the Committee for the Liberation of Terrifying Orbs. Oh, well, the clitoris. Oh, yeah, the yeah, clitoris. Yeah. I was and again, when I was watching this recently, I thought, God, these guys had to learn so much, and they learned it all so well. I mean, there's a lot of complicated stuff in here. Somebody's asking how we got away with the clitoris gag. I think it's like Monty Python and the Smegma gag. The people who were doing the compliance didn't know the word, never seen the word before. <laughs> Probably. And, and certainly didn't know where to find it, to use the old joke. Well, what's wrong with it? You could say penis. Well, no, you couldn't. I had a big row at London weekend about... Well, we said, we said penis, uh, oh God, I can't remember it out. Um, we, we had said penis the previous week and then we had clitoris the next week and we were told we couldn't. Yeah. And we said, well, hang, we said exactly that. We said, hang on a minute. We said penis the previous week and they then made us repeat when the repeats went out. The previous one went out at 11.30 as well. Hmm. The show had to go out at 11.30 because it had clitoris in it. <laughs> and then when they did the repeats, they said, right, well, we'll put the penis one late as well. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, they used to do it. Yeah, there was like a rationing of swearing, wasn't there? Yes. Well, the way I did, no, but that wasn't that. that this was a It was Helen Lederer hmm. that got the word clitoris, and and she said, "Well, hang on, you had pen so and so. I can't remember who used penis the previous week." And they <laughs> said, "Yeah, but the ones were in the other isn't." So you just. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, very good. Mel sets always look good here. If you get a chance to see, for instance, on. Chris is single, you get to see the corridor in the background, a bit of depth there, it all makes a big difference. It, it, um, it stops. It does, it gives flat. you so much more. Yeah. Andy Farm, oh, oh, there it is, here it is, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh that got, oh my God. <laughs> okay, Craig acting through the laugh. Craig and Craig just, <laughs> speak. listen, let's just kill it for fun's yeah. sake. <laughs> Andy Farmer's saying he'd like to have been at that executive's meeting where they were discussing the clitoris and the penis incident. <laughs> we just got, we just got a, we'd recorded the seven shows. It was stomping on the cat at London Weekend. Oh, we recorded the seven shows. Yeah. And we suddenly got this thing saying that this, this one with Helen Ledger and we'll have to go out at half past 11 at night. Oh God. It's a body part. What? <laughs> but they didn't know that. That was the problem. They didn't, <laughs> yeah, they didn't know, the know what word. it was. They never heard of it. <laughs> um, it is. It's smegma all over yeah. again. Yeah. Nice spooky music here to help us along with this. And um, point of view polymorph. It's a shame, really. It, it, again, a failing of mine was at the end of this sequence of the polymorph looking around the set. Nice. Uh, I had to make a cut there. I'd rather have that Craig jumped into the end of that shot. Yeah. But... What was that? Cam that was just a, a regular yeah. camera handheld. Yeah, yeah. Lovely gag with with the uh, with the baseball bat from <laughs> Craig. Yeah, he did that well. I thought it was well for the opening titles. I remember reading it, Rob. And by this time, I'm wondering how you're going to solve this because I know I've only got about four or five pages to go. Hmm. And I'm thinking, well, how do they get rid of this thing? This thing's indestructible. <laughs> and I hadn't foreseen the fact that you'd you trapped its, uh, its Death Star ready yeah. and waiting. I think it's a re brilliant That's just uh, one of my serious end. shots, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 For that to work. I have to say, in mitigation here, we were writing scripts that were impossible to shoot on, yeah. on video, never mind with a budget. Yeah. Um, but we pushed the envelope and good luck to us, I say. Yeah. But, and then, not only, not only do you have the great ending, you then, which you don't often do, actually, you then give us a whole new twist, which, again, I just love the yeah. slow rotation of the pod to reveal the, the terrible yeah. news. The, the, now, the vacuum cleaner. A lot of this, Rocky, you've absolutely ruined for me now. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I'm going to ruin some more. There's been a lot of talk of penis and clitoris. Um, <laughs> perhaps that's because the slime on the monster was mostly KY jelly. <laughs> well, um, obviously. We, we use tube after tube of KY jelly. It's quite funny because you, you have to send, you know, assistants get sent out to Boots to buy, you know, 20 tubes of KY jelly, please. Um, and of course, we get very strange looks from the, from the shop assistants in Boots. Yeah. I'm quite right, too. 
that end shot of Craig turning into the polymorph again, it would have been nice if it had come out yeah, of his mouth yeah. or his, fe yeah. his head had split open or something. But unfortunately, we just didn't have the technology or no, the, the joke, the the joke comes over. If we had yeah. the original footage, you could probably do it quite easily on your Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, we actually shot a lot of it, it on the phone, phone just, don't you know? You can yeah, almost do these yeah. things live on. Yeah. On your iPhone. On yeah. your iPhone, you're right. I mean, for the I we shot it with the idea. I did shoot it with Francis's mouth uh, as wide and close as possible, with the plan that polymorph would somehow come out of her mouth, but not to be. Anyway, really good episode, full of great jokes, yeah, just... great, very ambitious stuff for the day, um, and uh, a triumph of the special effects department. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll take the credit on their behalf, of course. Uh, you know, of course, of course. There was a team of them, but I can't remember any of their names right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I had a team. Rag, I think, it's just somebody, <laughs> you know, Nick, somebody calling. Who, who were they? Should, you're, you're so right, Stephen. That this series should have been at least in the BAFTA shortlist, but um, I never understood why we were. It was. I don't, I don't even think it was in the long list. I, or maybe it was. Um, I, who knows? I mean, we were so, but it we were wasn't so sort of independent. I mean, it wasn't... Yeah, we were kind of independent off the grid a bit, if you know what I mean. Um, well, you didn't have the weight, you know. There's no doubt that at the time you were advised which things were up for voting mm -hmm. in the in television centre, and I think with Manchester, there just wasn't that automatic weight of support yeah, behind it. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. So. Um, yeah, so good but show. Do you remember, Rob, I don't remember, did we blow a substantial part of the series budget on this? Yeah, on the uh, on the animatronic particularly, I think. <laughs> on this whole episode, yeah. Oh, that's right, blame and, us. Yeah, and the blame us for the overspend. Yeah, I have to say... We the, are doing that, Rocky. We are saying... probably right in this case. The alien like right the, the alien like retraction of the lips and the teeth reveals, and that was really, really good. I really like that. It worked really well. It just, he was a bit of an unwieldy beast. He was difficult to move around. Yes. Yeah. As you said, didn't you, Rocky? It took four people to... It was all cable controlled. Uh, it, none of it was radio controlled. It was all right. cable controlled. So mm. there, there was the, all these wires going out from the bottom of it and around the back of it mm. to different people with different little sort of pads with levers on that had been, mm. this guy had, um, had constructed. So yeah, every, every time you needed to set it up, you needed three or four people. Yeah. One doing the lips, one doing the arms, one moving the main body and so yeah. on. Yeah. Rob, yeah. why was there an artificial insemination syringe for a cow uh, on a mining ship? <laughs> Did they actually breed cattle in the hold? Um, I, I don't know, actually. Good question. Because, it, because it, yeah, the answer is because it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think... Uh, Somebody collected them. I think um, Peterson for use in sexual practices. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh good. I, I thought there would be a deeply unpleasant answer. A good reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently, according to Danny, um, Rumor's mum was re-recorded for the remastered version. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. Really? Really? Well, you weren't there, Ed. Well, you know, was I? The, the remastered, I did edit a lot of the remastered stuff. Um, Nicky, what was your question? I, I did, what was his favourite and least favourite? Was it that one? What were your least favourite and favourite uh, effects from this series? <clears throat> um, well, I, I, I can't really think of the least favourite. My, my favourites, I have, I have two main favourites. One is the, the crash in Marooned where the fireball hits Starbuck, mm. it, it rotates, spins down to the planet, crashes into the surface and grinds to a halt. And the reason I like it um, is it's a, a sequence. It's a nice sequence, mm. uh, effect sequence, mm. but with shot after shot after shot of, of my stuff. Mm. So, uh, so obviously I like it. It's, it's <laughs> my stuff followed by my stuff followed by my stuff, which you don't often see. <laughs> um, in, in you know in, in dwarf because you you don't have the time to to mm. for, the, for the luxury of that. Um, but the other one I like is a much simpler one. I think it was series six, um, where Ace Rimmer um, parachutes out of the the exploding plane, 
and he's chased and, and, and in the back of the plane is there's a crocodile mm. and the plane blows up and he parachutes out or falls out the crocodile falls out he then crashes into a uh, um, a shed comes out of the shed gets chased by a couple of germans mm. and then right at the end he flies off because the, the he flies off on a kind of rocket powered motorbike mm -hmm. And as the Germans are watching him, they're mightily impressed. And then, of course, the crocodile falls on the Germans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the German soldiers. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that was, uh, I like that one because and that was me and another guy, either side of these two actors on the top of the with a big rubber crocodile. <laughs> and it's a really funny, it's a really funny gag. And all we did was go three, two, one, and drop the crocodile. <laughs> you know, it's so simple, and it's just we, all. Uh, Old comedy. I remember, old, dropping, old, a, old I remember comedy. dropping a giant chocolate eclair on Robbie Coltrane in, in yeah. The Young Ones. The Young Ones. That was yeah. the same thing, uh, Rocky. We just built a huge yeah. chocolate eclair and dropped it. Yeah. And the same thing with Dawn French with a giant sandwich in The Young Ones as well. That's right. I thought it yes, actually right. killed her. But interesting, Rocky, <laughs> I remember shooting that uh, with the, uh, the crocodile coming down and doing the, the, the effect on the date. And when, when you dropped it and it hit those two guys and the framing was just right, the Germans yeah. just disappeared out of shot. It's one of those ones where you just hold onto the monitor and laugh because you just yes. know that's <laughs> going to be so funny in a sequence. You just see a and shot you also and you know, go, you that's it, a, brilliant, a, we've done it, moving on. That's you haven't got to retake perfect. it ten times, which absolutely is what you were planning for because you never on. thought it would work. Yeah, it's just one of those things, something Rob, you just can't you tell. Ever, Rob, did, were you ever tempted to return to the fact that, I mean, you've now got a stray polymorph that you can bring back any time you want to. Was it ever tempting to well, revisit? We, polymorph was the only um, uh, plot that ever sequeled in my Red Wolf career uh, in Emo Hawk in season six. Um, so obviously uh, yeah. it was on the cards at some point. Mm. Mm. You left it there as a little ticking bomb that you could go back to any time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it, it came was, in it, handy. It was, it, it, so I, I can't remember the recording order, but if we actually recorded this, I, mean, I know we didn't, but if we recorded backwards, then maroon, then this, I'm surprised that any of us are still alive by show. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I don't think it can have been those three in no. recording order, Ed, because mm -hmm. I honestly don't think we'd have done it. <laughs> no. No. I think it was, and, and the last one we recorded was the last day. Right. And um, what's 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 show four, guys? Is it uh, body swap? Let's see how quick we can get body that. Swap. Yep, yeah. there it is. Body <laughs> swap. Yeah. Seconds. Yeah. Swap and then time slides. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Jay. And then and then the last day. I think these were the first three we recorded in the series, and I think we were pretty shagged mm -hmm. by the end of it. Yeah, and they've been quite an exhausting filming Polymorph beforehand. Fifth. As well. Polymorph was formed fifth, says James. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember doing these three back to back like this. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't think you could have done it. Um, and there was quite an exhaustive filming process before all of this as well, particularly for backwards and and that the, the sequences in the in the hangar with the boxes was was pre filmed in Liverpool, I think. Um, so. Uh, the good thing about that, yeah, one, Maroon, that Maroon was shot that first, we think. It, it released a bit of time in the studio. If you shot some stuff beforehand, it gave you a little bit more time to play in the studio. The first shot I remember, there's a talk about when Robert was first seen. The first scene I remember recording was pre VT. I was uh, filming in the uh, Crown Plaza in the jacuzzi. Do you remember for mm -hmm. Body? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was, I think, the first time Robert had been in the Crichton Cosy. And he it had was. That. It was, and of course, he was in a boiling hot costume with a rubber head, and we decided to shoot a sequence in a spa, which was boiling, <laughs> with a jacuzzi bubbling away. With so a, he, he must have gone there and going, what the hell have I let myself in for? <laughs> yeah, he got electrocuted with the, the, the lighter in his thumb, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blooded in blood, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks so much um, for, for coming on, Rocky. It's been brilliant. And like I say... Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Uh, the Viz Effects unit really was starting to get very, very integral with the, the whole... Uh, what Did we... you never get any sort of award recognition as a unit, Rocky, for all these oh, yeah. series? Um, Red Dwarf won the, the Royal Television Society Best Special Effects Award. Good. Um, hey. Three times for, for Red Dwarf. Um, I, I think it's won one... 
more recently as well as, as a, a Royal Television Society award. But yeah, we uh, Peter, right. Peter Peter picked it up three times. I can't remember whether it was one after the other, but mm. there, there were certainly three wins. Yeah, so, yes, we did. quite right. I got, I got sent up to Paul Fox at the BBC. Yeah, we had a we had a big um, there was a big uh, sort of celebration of all the Royal Television Society winners within the various. Right categories and and I was the one and only time I got to the sixth floor at television center <laughs> uh, to, to you shake didn't hands want to be with, there you didn't want to be there anyway to, sh to shake hands with Paul Fox right Sir, Sir Paul Fox Sir Paul Fox. When, um, free champagne no. free, free champagne so I did want yeah, to oh yeah <laughs> if you got to the sixth floor Rocky free champagne was a given <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was it was on tap from yeah. the minute you got in. Yeah. Just to explain to everybody, the sixth floor at the BBC was the executives' floor, the where all the heads season. of lived. And yeah, I think you had to have your own key to get into the labs. Well, there. there was certainly you had yeah, yeah. Bill Cotton, old plated toilets, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it was, and it was also <laughs> where the famous Christmas parties took place in the hospitality yeah. suite yeah. on the sixth floor. Uh, Robert Sachenbach is asking if we thought Series 3 was going to be the last. I always thought from 3 onwards it was going to be the last series, and that's why it was called The Last Day, yeah. It it's was. You did write The Last Day, think it was your last ever episode. Right? It could be the last ever episode, but it's also a tribute to The Last Detail, the Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Uh, the Jack Nicholson, one of the great movies, by the way, if you haven't seen that, anybody. The Last Detail, one of Jack Nicholson's best movies. Yeah, really and not, I mean, I only say that because it's not one of his best known. It was a fabulous movie. Mm -hmm. He's taking a poor, some poor rookies for on the wrong side of military law and he's got to be jailed and Jack's taking him, taking him to the, to the jail. It's a great movie. Yeah, he plays it so well. It's one of those ones where with Nicholson, when he's right on it, you kind of go, this is exactly I love that. what he's like. This is who like, he is. Yeah. It's like five easy pieces. It's that down, dirty Nicholson that you think is really Nicholson, yeah. And the, and the classic line, I am the motherfucking sure patrol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good watch, guys, if you haven't seen it. One for lockdown. Um, a few of you I know joined us last week for Private Lives, which uh, I hope those of you who did join it uh, enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, we're not allowed to make any more announcements, Rob, are we really? Not just yet, but yeah, but thanks all of you. We there will be, there will be, yes, we did. Thank you all so much. We raised over 40 grand, 44, 45 grand. Wow. And I can tell you, I think it's fair, Rob, there will be more to come. We're hoping towards the end of October. And we, we've, we just got this right sorted on Friday and we're, Rob and I are thrilled and excited. It, it should be, be really nice. Well, I tell you, if you, if, you there, if you weren't there uh, last Sunday, it was a sparkling soiree. Yeah. Emma Thompson blasted the Zoom screen like it was uh, 70 millimetres, honestly, and, and Robert, they were fantastic. Robert, Sanjeev, and Amelia. Amelia was just a delight. It was well, a real treat. Amelia Clark, who's played Mother of Dragons, and she's also uh, played... played uh, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor in The Terminator. Mm. Two icons in one, what's not to like? Yeah, for sure. I, I yeah, know, that's a good question. I know that um, uh, our Antipodean uh, uh, chums have a difficult time tuning in uh, at seven at night here. Um, uh, if we get the numbers, we could probably persuade them to do a special uh, Aussie uh, broadcast. Um, but I don't know how we would do that I, I i'm certainly pleading your case it's it's very difficult because we're dealing with estates who uh, are very kind well they, rob the point is they're gifting us material which is worth very substantial sums of money to them i mean you don't just go and do waiting for godot without permission and you don't just do noel coward without permission and indeed the author of the one that's coming up you don't do his work just when you feel like it so i do feel terrible about the australian thing but it kind of that is the rule they've given us or that's what we ask for it, it does won't be recorded it won't be shared guys, which for you of course is sleepless days but I, I i will do whatever i can to to mitigate that it's not right and uh, the problem is you can't schedule uh, an event that that's globally acceptable time-wise can you well you listen one of the reasons london's the financial capital of the world is because it's just about the nearest you can get to, to something that America and the whole of Europe and quite a lot of Asia can see in the same <clears> daylight period. But unfortunately, Australia just falls out of that, that rather backward 
little area down right down there at the bottom of the antipodes. You know, guys, you're just not quite on the same, on the same way. <laughs> Don't but... listen to him. I listen, knew an insult was coming. I love Australia. <laughs> yeah, Joe Sharples is saying the next one is run for your wife. How the hell did she find that out? Oh, Joe. <laughs> It is not, we're not doing regularly, we're not. I'd be mortified if you were right. I mean, not because of the play, but I'd be mortified if you knew the right answer. Yeah, um, yeah I did, by the way, that was a joke about Australia. I lived there for three years in Sydney and I loved it. <laughs> Uh, One Paul, of my and I have, Paul and I have done a lot of successful television making in, in Australia. You and I Ed, have had some very good times. In yeah, the, we had some in good times down there. <laughs> Ed and I went down to uh, Melbourne for the Bicentennial Comedy Festival. Uh, those of you who are old enough to remember, they did a big, the Melbourne Comedy Festival did a big special for the Bicentennial. Mm. And it, we had a great time. We had yeah. a great trip. Yeah. yeah, you come back. Come back. As we've got to go. Or I've got to go. Yeah, no, we've all got to go. You've got to go too, guys. And See you uh, next week. See you next week for uh, Body Swap. Body yeah. Swap. An intriguing, intriguing episode. Rocky, thank you so much, matey. No thank worries. you. Rocky, really to good here. to see you, man. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, maybe, maybe I can join in on, on one or two more down the line. Yay! Well, don't push it. Don't push it. That was very good. Keep me informed. Let me know and then... Um, Okay, we'll, we'll pick... Um, uh, don't, hang on, just don't, don't uh, bloody uh, hog it, Roggy. It was very nice <laughs> to see you. I mean, you're really a bloody push. <laughs> Good to All see right. you, man. All, All right, right man. Take care, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure.